Namaste to everyone and welcome to the 11th series of Yoga Charcha. I would like to welcome a lot of distinguished guests that we have today, but everyone just as important. We've got Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, who's the director of the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center. We've got Mr. Kamal Maharaj, who is an educator and the CEO of Vishwa Shakti. We have Ms. Paula Martini, who's our yoga practitioner and also the interviewer today. We've got Ms. Danielle Riddle. We've got our Mr. Sifiwe Mchunu. And of course, person who's actually behind the scenes and helping us with all the technical aspects, but does the most, we have Mr. Sashil Mana. Welcome, everyone. And it's really good to have you today. And I look forward to much more exciting discussions and interactions. First up, I'm going to hand over to Mr. Kamal Maharaj, who's going to do the welcome. Namaste, everyone. In fact, it's uh, really um, awesome to be once with this August group. And, uh, you know, yoga, the idea of yoga was developed in, in India and it spread throughout the world. Uh, I think more and more as we are investigating this uh, beautiful uh, form of holistic development, uh, people are be beginning to realize that there is yoga benefits beyond the mat. And this is what we need to understand. As we uh, went through the various interviews, we began to realize how broad this uh, idea is. And whether you're practicing yoga in the ancient land of Bharat or in New York uh, City Times Square or in, uh, in South Africa, wherever, you find that you begin to learn that yoga has benefits beyond the mat. And, you know, while modern media and advertising have uh, made us think that yoga is just a physical uh, poses, but yoga includes a wide range of contemplative and self-disciplinary practices, such as meditation, chanting, mantra ucharan, uh, the idea of breath control, and even self-discipline. Uh, that is, from within the self, one is able to map out a special type of, of uh, approach to life. So, of course, the scientific research into yoga benefits is still hasn't touched what the yoga sutras Patanjali has been talking about, but we will go over some of the aspects. Uh, firstly, we know uh, the focus is generally Hatha Yoga, but we need to go beyond Hatha Yoga. Hatha Yoga may be our starting point with some form of Dhyana Yoga, uh, Pranayam. At the outside, at the physical level, it helps us get a good body image, a, a beautiful mind. Once our self-esteem goes up, then even boosting and maintaining a good body weight and enhancing fitness uh, and also cardiovascular benefits, becoming more mindful, even simple things when we're eating, becoming mindful. You know, all these aspects coming together create an all-embracing idea of what yoga is. Today, we are actually uh, honored to welcome our uh, chief guest, Ms. Danielle Little, and she is going to take us through uh, this idea of yoga. And, um, you, you know, uh, we are waiting once again, as we are uh, done with so many of the uh, persons and personalities and yoga practitioners today, Danielle Rittel, we wait with bated breath to listen to your story, to listen to your ideas, and I'm sure it's going to take us to the next level. Thank you so much, and over to the team. 
Namaste. Thank you for those very uh, informative words of wisdom, Mr. Kamalji. We really appreciate it. And right now, the essence of today's program, the discussion and interaction with Ms. Paula Martini and Ms. Danielle Ritter. So the yogic way is Danielle's sustenance and anchor to navigate the vicissitudes of life and her inspiration to be of service to the world. As a qualified IAM maker, I hope I've said that correctly, Ms. Danielle, yoga level two teacher, she makes yoga accessible to all, irrespective of age and physical condition. In fact, it has a remarkable impact on all human conditions and spiritual desires. Primarily based in Rive Castile, she divides her time and teachings amongst various towns of the Swartland in the Western Cape. Without further ado, over to Ms. Danielle Riddle and Ms. Paula Martin. Thank you so much and namaste and, and welcome to um, today's um, interaction and I, I really look forward to um, chatting with you. It's um, always so nice when I um, have people following our series and um, they get so excited about the program and we get recommendations and, and you have been one of them. So um, I'm, I'm really, really excited about today's interaction. So I'm going to kick it off and, and ask, how do you understand or define yoga? Namaste to everyone. It's great being here. This is um, quite exciting <laughs> to be off the mat and just talking about yoga. Um, and your question, Paula, I, I basically would approach it the classical way in the sense that if you take the root word of yoga, yog, and um, translate it to, to yoke, and through that, that aspect of yoking, it means a unionship, bringing together. And I think ultimately that is what uh, yoga is about. As you've mentioned, it's about um, living life in a specific way that creates um, more harmony as as a human on having this earthly experience which is generally fairly challenging but always with that great promise of finding bliss on earth and yoga as a form of uniting the discrepancy between our minds and our bodies and then the spiritual aspect um, is I think is, is that um, all encompassing idea that every, everybody should know that, you know, yoga is such a wonderful, vast, vast um, ancient tradition that most people forget how far back the Vedas go and the Upanishads and where this knowledge comes from and the, the Patanjali Sutras. And like... Um, Patanjali says in the first sutra, you know, it's the, the aim of yoga is the, the one translation is the stilling of the fluctuations of the mind. So ultimately we can stand on our heads and do all these physical things, but it is the mind that needs to be cultivated so that we can really express the, you know, our spiritual destiny on earth. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful, a very, very lovely explanation um, and um, definition. And how did you get connected with yoga? I started as a student. I was studying law at Stellenbosch University and, and found, uh, I'd always, I don't know, yoga was just sort of ever present. My um, parents had both done yoga in, in the past. And I found a teacher that um, I think was one of those, I was lucky enough to have a teacher who really inspired me. It was just a very simple Hatha yoga practice. 
but it was wonderful because it cultivated a love for yoga and it was something that I just felt connected to it's um I still believe it's 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 part of my my karmic heritage to to be teaching you know be being part of this um the the yoga and I then stopped doing yoga for about 15 years and then I eventually out of desperation I found a, a younger yoga teacher close by to where I was living in Franschhoek. And that just set me off on my path. Um, I ended up with wonderful, wonderful mentors. And yeah, they encouraged me to eventually start teaching. So it was a long, long road, <laughs> but I got there eventually at a, at a late age. If I'd carried on, you know, as, as a young person, if you see these yogis who, who start very young, you know, they have, have a larger, a longer lifespan when it comes to asana. But luckily for us, we've got all the other aspects of yoga that we can practice and uh, irregardless of age. So yes, that's absolutely. a bonus. <laughs> and do you feel any difference in your own uh, life due to the practice of yoga? Absolutely. I, right from the beginning, I, I could feel and sense that yoga brought a kind of equilibrium to my life, you know, as you know, everyday challenges, you just coped with stress better. I had quite a stressful job and it made all the difference for me to, to create that mindfulness and that awareness and it um yeah so on a mental level i definitely felt it and then physically as well it gave me the strength and the stamina i needed to to do my job and and over the years i have noticed that my immune system is is strong my body is strong i was recently in a a very bad car accident and my body came out miraculously and through the whole process i mean my bones i broke my arm my wrist healed within five weeks the doctor said six seven weeks five weeks the cast was off and through being able to breathe and meditate while i was like incarcerated you know with with things around my neck and whatever it i just feel it kind of saved my life I, I came out of that event um, far, far better off than I would have if I was if I were not practicing yoga. Wow, that's an incredible story. And and do you have a, any specific style or school of yoga? I do. I practice Iyengar yoga, and I think most people are familiar with uh, BKS Iyengar. Uh, it's a system that. I have grown to respect hugely over the years of teaching and um, following the teach the teachings of Guruji has just shown me what depth, what clarity he, he had, even though he basically focused on asana, he incorporated all eight limbs of yoga in every practice he's he's awareness and it was it's just phenomenal and it it was taught you know he picked his daughter Gita G also um picked up this incredible ability and, and so has his granddaughter Abhijata and I've just realized how this system really supports the practice of yoga for everybody. You know, Guruji said yoga is for everybody. People unfortunately have this idea that you have to be flexible to be able to do yoga. You must be able to do Padmasana to do yoga. And it's like, no, you know, if you've got, you don't even have to have two arms and, and two legs, you can still do yoga, you know, whether it's, just your meditation or your um, mantras 
or even asanas, like he said, with props. Um, so I'm I'm very grateful for having found um, Ayenga as a as a style. Excellent. And do you feel that yoga is not only a physical exercise or a scheduled activity, but as an integrated approach and understanding to live life in its entirety? Absolutely. Um, once again, one does tend to have people coming to a yoga class often with the the very limited view of yoga just being about asana and the, the physical thing, you know, they, they go to a gym and they see, oh, you can do yoga at the gym, so it must be, it's just exercise. But the minute they step into a yoga class and they go and they do the, the poses as an asana with that awareness, that mindfulness, and with a breath awareness, it changes a, a, a just a purely physical pose to an asana. It, it just shifts it because at the end of the class, they finish and they, they don't know why they're feeling so amazing. You know, something has shifted. There's something that's happened, which you can't always put your foot on and it's your finger on and it's not just the endorphins that have kicked in from like you get when you've done a, a gym workout there is and and that is what gets people thinking okay now what what there's something else here and I think um, that is the big difference and it's important to you can get people you can you can coerce them into um into practicing yoga by saying, okay, just use your body. It's easily accessible. Guruji always said, you know, start with, with the body people. It's tangible. It's, they, they can see what's going on. You can't see your thoughts. You know, connecting to your breath is not always easy. So start with a gross body. And like you said, you know, you work through the koshas, through the layers from the, the outer, and you refine. Um, to, to the, the core, and that is the, the true journey, is from the periphery to, to the core. Yes, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I think many people come in with an intention of, of getting fit and, and doing tricks and, and leave completely um, different and, and never the same again, actually. <laughs> and do you feel that yoga is an art and a science which gives us a sense of affinity and connectedness with the entire universe? Once again, I've feel it it is such a vast subject that the minute you start exploring even if it is just like you say moving from that feeling the shift from exercise to asana and then starting to become aware of what the breath does and then what your thoughts are doing and how we we work and connect deeper and deeper um, the, from a scientific point of view, I think the world is now very much on board. There is enough evidence out there through the universities, all the research that's being done as to the benefits of yoga. I mean, I'm sorry, there's just nobody who can deny it. Um, whether it's, you know, meditation or pranayam, whatever, the benefits, the scientific proof is there. Mm. And as an art, I believe it, it gives us that, that ability to, if we, if we become familiar with the eight limbs of yoga, it gives you a way to live. That it makes living an art. Um, if, you, if you adhere to the eight limbs and it gives you that, that access to you know, the universe and to the divine within and that connection to the, the divine without and having that reflection internally. So it's, and then it's also a philosophy. You know, we, we all know it's a wonderful ancient tradition and philosophy. And thank goodness it's not a religion because it just <laughs> keeps a lot of politics at bay. So, yes. 
<laughs> couldn't agree more and i think it's um it's a way of living you know it's it's how you how you do it and, and and i love that you mentioned the eight limbs of yoga because i think that's something that i found being um a practitioner is that you when you live it breathe it feel it it's it's off the mat and on the mat there's so much more to it so um yes and do you um feel that yoga represents universal energy or universal love and compassion absolutely once again it teaches you to make that inner connection to the divine and once you can um you have that awareness and that connection it it just changes your whole consciousness i mean basically that's what yoga does to me it 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 shifts your consciousness and to you know and yeah definitely <laughs> Yes, I, I, I get that. It, 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 it makes the unexplainable, uh, explainable, but unexplainable in, in normal sense of the, of the word. So yes, I, 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 fully, um, I fully understand and, and feel you there. And the last thing is, would you kindly suggest some simple asanas for our viewers and, and audience today? Well, I was thinking the first thing I came, I'm not sure what the viewership is, but if it's from what I could understand, it's 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 to basically introduce people to yoga. And I just find one of the great things about a Yenga yoga is the fact that he used started off using household props. And through lockdown, I've just seen how how it all came about, how it was for him teaching online. And you've got to say to people, go and find a pillow, go and find your get a pile of books, get a scrap, get your dog leash, find a table, go get your cot, go lie on your bed, do Viparita you know, Dandasana on your bed. And it's fantastic. So what I suggest is for people, I mean, we all have chairs, you can literally seat it, sit in your chair, you can do fantastic twists, you can stand up from your chair, Put your hands on the back of your chest, step back, Ardha Uttanasana, you can stretch and do a whole yoga. I mean, these days it's popular. You know, we have books about chair yoga, but really it's, you can use a chair, you can sit on it, stretch your legs out in front of you, reach forwards down towards the floor, especially if your hamstrings are tight. Um, you can stand, put your foot on the seat of the chair, lunge forwards and from there you can involve and you know like I said do all your asanas <laughs> with a chair or on a chair or under a chair but literally you know just sitting or standing is um is with with a simple prop like a chair is is a wonderful thing to have you've got no excuse not to do yoga ever Namaskar. I'm here to show you a couple of my favorite poses. The first little series involves repeating the same shape of the body in various asanas. For example, taking Ardha Uttanasana, where you bring your torso and your arms to 90 degrees to the legs. A great stretch to do anywhere at any time. From there, the pose can go, the shape can go to Adha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And then it can be brought to half handstand, Adha Mukha Frikshasana. And then one can bring it down to the floor for your seated poses, such as Ubaya Parangustasana. And then taking it into the classic staff pose, Dandasana. 
Put your arms in Urdhvahastas. So you can see how the same shape gets repeated, but with different effects depending on the asana. Another little sequence you can play with is the wide-legged poses. So just starting in Prasarita, Paraptanasana, allowing the inner legs to lengthen and the spine to lengthen and the head to release. And then that one takes into Upavishta Konasana. You can see the same shape, the similar action being repeated, but a totally different effect and different feel. And finally, taking it into Upavishta Konasana. Right. And then as I mentioned, the usefulness of a chair to experiment and add dimension to your standing poses, such as doing the classic Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2, with the front leg on the chair, where your back arm reaches into the past, front arm reaches into the future, and the torso and the heart center is in the present. From there, the pose evolves into Uttita Parshvakunasana, extended side angle pose, which then unfolds into Uttita Rikunasana, which can then take you into Arda Chandrasana, half moon pose. So there's always something new to discover in your asana practice. And then ending it by just a gentle twist, but of a jasana on your chair, twisting towards the back to release the spinal muscles. And lastly, to open the chest and the heart. Namaste. No, I think, I think you're 100% right. It's one of those practices where you, whether you, um, you know, people think you need to be in a studio, you need to have a mat, you need to have, the blocks you need to have the straps it's you literally as you're walking down the road are able to do yoga because you you're concentrating on core and you're doing while you're pushing your trolley or while you're sitting in tv and and i love doing my um pranayamas while i'm busy driving um and yes, yeah I, you know you can you can do so many different things throughout the day without having to be on a mat for an hour to say that i, I have actually um, attended a yoga class it, it is the way you you live your daily life so thank you so much and and thank you very much for joining us um today and for your your lovely comments and feedback and i uh, have absolutely loved this interaction thank you so much thank you it's been great being present and um may yes may may the good word spread <laughs> fantastic thank you so much and thank you to everyone for joining us as well. I definitely enjoyed that interaction. There's two things that resonated with me. One, when you said, I'm not, uh, 
Ms. Danielle G said that you cannot deny that there are benefits of yoga. The scientific evidence is enough. And the second one is there's no excuse for you not to be doing yoga because everybody could do yoga at any time. It's simple, it's easy, and you're using your everyday household items and props. It's nothing difficult whatsoever. So definitely something that I will be taking back from that. I'm going to try and make a concerted effort to include yoga as well in my daily activity. All right. And before we close right now, we're going to chat to Mr. CPG to give us his thoughts and close remarks. Namaskar. Greetings to all of you. On behalf of Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, at the Consulate General of India in Devon, I am honored today to deliver a vote of thanks on our episode 11 of the program Yog Chacha. Allow me to thank our online guest, Ms. Paula Martini, a yoga practitioner, and Ms. Danielle Rittel, who is a, a yoga tutor. And lastly, to our Mr. Kamal Maharajji, who is an educator and founder of Vishwa Shakti. Uh, Kamalji he gave us a very warm welcoming remarks. So to uh, Ms. Paula Martiniji and Ms. Danielle Ritelji, thank you very much for such a wonderful, informative uh, uh, the interactions that you have on yoga this evening. To director of the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, our program director, Ms. Arti Rajkumar, Mr. Sashil Mana, thank you very much for taking part on today's program. To on all our online participants, we'd like to say thank you very much for being with us this evening. You are kindly advised to visit ICCR in Deben Facebook page for more information on cultural activities organized by Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center in Deben. Once again, to our online guest, Ms. Paula Martiniji, Ms. Daniel Ritelji, Mr. Kamal Maharaji, Danyavat for taking part on today's program. To all of you, have a wonderful evening. Namaskar. <laughs>